so I'm just a simple medical doctor who has been working with, with practical issues. It was also very, very interesting to, to hear these experiences from the states um, so that how elderly people can, can live full life and, and practical issues. We are coming from, uh, from different uh, societies, from different backgrounds. And uh, so I will, I'll try to, to tell something about, about Finland. First, I have to apologize that uh, the slides you have seen are not the, the same. I, I have added quite, quite a lot. It was not easy to, to send all the so, so much by, by email. But uh, I hope you can, you can follow my, my presentation. So you, you see that I, I speak simple English because English is not my, my mother tongue. It has been very, I, I have felt really at home this morning. It was snowing. <laughs> so I, I come from the eastern part of Finland where we have hard winter. I live next to the Russian border. So I have also some experience to, to cooperate with, with this superpower. <laughs> so I come from North Karelia. Uh, some of you who have been working with, with health issues might recognize the, the Karelia, North Karelia project has been very, very famous in, in dealing with, with health promotion since 1972. That's my, my area. So I'll, I'll try to share some, some experiences how the local government is, is trying to, to manage. So when, when I speak about local government, it's a bit, bit different from the local government what you have in, in the States. So this is my, my, my background. So I, as I told, I'm, I'm a medical doctor by, by profession, but I have almost forgotten all medical issues and, and working with, with management and administration and, and health and social work for, for so long time and also over 10 years in, in different countries in, in over 30 countries. At the moment, uh, actually, I have uh, retired from my, my permanent uh, civil servant job, but still I have agreed that I can try to help my, my region, or some people call it county, to do some, some reform. The, the reform is, is going on, but we don't know what is going to happen that the parliament has not yet made up his or its mind. If I have time, I can, I can tell something about that. Mr. Chair, how much do I have time? 40 minutes. OK. Then up to 2 o'clock. <laughs> I mean, 3. Yeah. OK, good. Maximum 40 minutes. <laughs> so North Karelia is the, the eastern part of Finland as you can see, and uh, the population is, is small. In all Finland, we have only 5.5 uh, million people. I have understood that in uh, metropolitan Seoul region, you have uh, three or four times that population already. And we have uh, 13 municipalities, you can see. And the biggest one is the city of Joensu, where I live. And we have uh, 76,000 people. And then we have uh, some very small municipalities just up north, for example. It is about with 2,000 population. So the municipalities are very different. But that is the administrative unit in, in Finland. And it is interesting that each unit, whether it has got a population of half a million 
like our capital Helsinki and the, the small municipality Valtimo has the, the same tasks to do and also some, some rights. So, and uh, from, from Joensu to the north, it's almost 200 kilometers to the south, over 100, to the east, over 100 kilometers. So it is, it is quite a vast area and not too much people there. So you can imagine that we have certain challenges to, to provide the, the, the services. And uh, as we discussed just about where the children and uh, parents are living, often it, it happens that the parents are, are staying in these remote areas and the younger generation has to move to, to cities to, to find jobs. And I understood that this is quite universal phenomenon everywhere in the world. And uh, it, it creates some, some challenges. I will uh, try to present some facts about the Finnish healthcare and social welfare system then some challenges of the aging population and uh, how uh, we are organizing the, the services. And uh, if we have time, then I will, I will tell you about the, the regional reform, what is going on in, in Finland. I think Finland um, is the most decentralized country in the world or devolved, what, what term you, you might want to use. Because the, the municipality is responsible for service provision, not the central government. So my presentation is not sci uh, scientific, and uh, I think because I, I coming from the management then, it's the, the point of view is decision-making, uh, politics. Politics affect a lot what we are doing and uh, how we are managing. It's about leadership and, and management. In, in Finland, the roles and responsibilities of the central government are mainly um, making the laws, and that's it. Then the, the service uh, provision is the responsibility of the municipality. It includes health and social services, basic education, culture, sports, and, and uh, technical services, providing water and, and roads and also sidewalks, as, as we heard, what you are promoting in, in the States. I like that because Finnish people, we, we like to walk a lot. And when I can't go to, to America, then I, I hard it, sometimes uh, find it hard. I, I should have a car. And I think America is, is more built for cars. And, and Europe is, is uh, mainly built for poor people who have to walk, <laughs> who cannot afford to, to have a car. So uh, the Finnish system is very much municipality-based system. And that is very, a very old system, centuries. The, the municipalities have very, very strong autonomy. They have their, only, their own political decision makers and uh, the, the central government can just make the laws. Of course, they can, uh, they can uh, give some general orders. Sometimes they, they want to establish uh, development projects in order to, 
to try to give some guidance to the, to the municipalities, but still the, the municipalities are the ones uh, which are making the, the decisions. So this, um, you can ask whether this is good or bad. My answer is yes and no. <laughs> to a certain extent, it's, it's very good that we can make the, the decisions at the local level so that the, the decisions suit the, the local requirements. But, again, if we have a municipality with 2,000 people, you can understand that it is not easy to run all the and deliver all the needed services. Then the municipality is the organizer, the purchaser of the of the services, but at the moment it is also the main provider. Somehow we have uh, a mixed system, um, public-private partnership. The public authority is responsible to, to make sure that the services are provided to all people, whether you are young or old. There is, there is no difference. And everybody, the, the Nordic welfare state means that the public authority is responsible to make sure that all individuals get the needed services. In the, in the old days, you know that the family took care of many things. And in Finland, if the children are willing to help, in, in caring their old adults, that's fine, and, and most do. But if they don't like to do, do that, then it is the, the responsibility of the municipality to organize the, the services. Of course, we also have a lot of voluntary work, but I, I very much liked the, uh, what I heard that this kind of voluntary organizations are, are doing a lot. So the uh, municipalities can uh, deliver the, the services by its own, or it can uh, buy services from private companies, for example, or, or NGOs. But the responsibility is the, the municipalities. Funding of the, of the services in, in Finland, when we uh, think about the, the fees, patient fees or, or other fees, that's about less than 10% of the, of the expenses. And then our services are tax funded. There is a municipality tax, which vary a little in, in different municipalities. Some municipalities are richer than others, and they, they collect less tax from their population. But then the, the central government, which collects most of the, of the taxes, will give money to, to municipalities. It is not earmarked, it is just a lump sum, and then the municipality is free to, to use it. You might know that uh, our tax load is, is quite heavy, and it was interesting to hear that in, uh, in Ohio, people are willing to, to, uh, to pay extra taxes in order to, to provide uh, these this services. That's fine. But also in Finland, uh, we have been asked, or the government asked sometime that uh, 
are people willing to, to pay uh, more taxes or do they prefer to cut services? And most people are willing to pay more taxes. That is, that is interesting to, to hear. So, you know that uh, we have a somehow a mixed system so that as an individual I can go to, to public services or I can go to fully private services to, to see a private doctor and then I will get some refund from the social insurance institution which is everybody every Finnish citizen is, is a member of, of that. But our system is in, in practice tax funded and we uh, as, as health workers are employees of the, of the municipality or some municipalities have joined hands and, and employ together. For example, in, in Finland, I mean in, in North Karelia, uh, we have a lot of uh, private health and, and social service providers. And uh, mainly the municipality is buying these services. So as an individual, you don't see a difference if you go to a public, publicly organized service or you go to a private service, you will get the, the same services because the, the municipality is, is responsible. Or you can, you can have a voucher. More and more we, we like to have this kind of voucher so that the, the patient or client, I think I would like to say, has the freedom to choose to, to what service provider he or she is, is willing to, to go. And that's uh, today very, very popular so that uh, people are expected to, to have more and more freedom to choose. Of course then the, the ministries are, are making, or of course the, the parliament finally, is, is responsible for, for laws and the municipality is responsible for, for service provision. And, and then uh, we have uh, certain uh, agencies in between which are somehow uh, trying to control what the, the municipalities are, are doing. That's the system. So, so actually, we have a very, very simple system at the moment, but uh, later when I, when I talk about the, the reform that will change our system a little bit. I think this is very, very well known to you that we have a, a challenge when we talk about the, the aging. Here you see the, the population pyramids from the 1990, Finland, North Karelia and, and Lieksa, which is a small city with uh, 12,000 people. Is this a real pyramid? Well, you can imagine that it is, it is a pyramid. You see an interesting hump here that's the, the people after the, the Second World War. So we, we got a lot of children during the years 1945 up to 1950. So I think uh, Korea and Finland are very similar that after the Second World War, both countries were quite poor and not well developed, but uh, we have progressed a lot. The older generations have done a lot, so we can enjoy good life.
nowadays. 2015. Twenty forty. How do you think this this city will will survive? Who is going to earn the money for the for the services of the of us? Because I, I belong to that generation. I have a good pension. I, I don't need to worry. I have been a civil servant for, for so long time. So this is the, the demographic uh, dependency ratio in, in North Karelia, so that how many people are working and, and providing for the, for the young ones and, and for the elderly. So you can see that, that here there is almost one to one. So this is, this is challenging. And this is the, the, the situation. So you see that we had more younger people, less older people, but now it is, is it, it is changing. I also read yesterday in, in your local paper that 40% uh, of newly wed uh, couples don't have children after five years. So I think we are facing the, the, the same situation in, in Finland and in, in Korea as well. <coughs> Amount of, el of the elderly in, in, in Joensu. I don't want uh, very much to, to speak about uh, people who are 65. They are, they are not really old. When we are uh, speaking about old people, we should say over 75 or even over 85. Because most people between 65 and, and 74 are, are living completely normal life. They, they don't need much services. And uh, we can see that the situation, the amount of uh, 65, uh, 74 is growing and, and starting to, to come down. But the age groups 75 plus and especially 85 plus are, are growing. So this is, this is the, the, the challenge. Then the, the question is that uh, if, the, if the amount of uh, 85 plus is doubling, do we uh, organize also twice as much services? This figure is, is my private thinking. This is not scientific fact. But I, I did this in, in Joensu when I was the director for health and social services and I was worried about the, the situation. If I take the, the amount of uh, 75 plus in, in 2005 and take 20 years, then the amount, the real amount is, is growing almost around 50%. But um, studies have showed that also the, the, the capacity, the how people are actually the their uh, ability to to live is also improving and that's about three years in in 20 years so then i i should compare the amount of um, 78 years old after 20 years with with this 75 figure and when I do this comparison then the I, I'm not so so worried anymore about the the growth of the of the service needs this is a very important decision uh, for the for the politicians so in in, in Finland 
Proportion living alone, almost half. Problems with, uh, with health. Difficulties of, of daily activities. And great difficulties in taking care of themselves over 70 years. And then, of course, there are a lot of people, growing amount of people to have memory difficulties. The, the previous speaker already mentioned the, the Alzheimer disease, which is uh, a big issue everywhere. But um, we understand that there are, are, are challenges. Loneliness. We heard a lot what, what can be done. NGOs, churches, family members, etc., etc. Insecurity. People, when, when they have uh, memory problems, they have difficulties with, with the movement. So they, they, they feel insecure and, and worried about it. If they fall down, who is going to help them? We have uh, organized at the moment so that the rescue and emergency medical services are in the same organization as health and social services. So that in the rural and remote areas, because we cannot organize uh, nursing help 24-7, so that the, the emergency services will, will go there and, and people can live in, in their remote homes and, and feel secure. This is um, psychologically very, very important. They have uh, health problems and, and difficulties to, to cope with daily activities. And uh, the, the support services which are provided by the municipality or other organizations or, or friends or, or relatives are extremely important. I can give this, this picture to you, but I, I don't go uh, into details. So uh, in Finland, we understand that there, there are health services, there are social services, but when we talk about the, the services for the elderly, it is very uh, difficult to differentiate whether it is health or, or social. When we are talking about uh, home care, meaning that we are providing care to the, to the client to home. Sometimes we are, we are using this, these terms uh, in, in different countries in, in different meanings and I, I try to explain what I, what I mean with that. That is normally a service provided by, by professionals, nurses or nursing assistants to, to homes. Officially, home care is, is social, but more and more it is health. That's why we cannot really say which, to, to which it, it belongs, it's, it's both. So we have a variety of, of services what we, would, we need to, to provide. So this is statistics from, uh, from Finland, living at their own home, around 90%. And this is something we, we try to, to make more and, and more so that people can, can live in their own homes and, and provide home care, regular home care, meaning that they will get services every day, sometimes two, three or even four times a day and also during the, the night. It is challenging. I have experienced this also. My, my mother-in-law lived in, in her home and, and received three times. Somebody came to, to see her. She, she's still alive, 90 at the moment, living in, uh, in a nursing home at the moment. Then we can uh, provide some, some payment to 
normally to, to relatives which are, are taking care. And then service uh, housing uh, with 24-7 uh, with services is, is about this much. And institutional care is, is coming down because we are saying that hospital, whether it is a small community hospital or, or bigger specialized hospital, shouldn't be a home for anyone. It is not a disease if you are old. These are some figures from, uh, from North Karelia. And I'm, I'm extremely happy about, about this figure. We used to have a lot of small community hospitals, health center wards. And uh, now people are, are living more in, uh, in different types of residential homes where it is, it is different. You are more independent, you are using your, your own clothes, you have your, your own furniture, you are, uh, you are able to make decisions if, even if, if you have memory difficulties. And, and this is a very important political issue. Then uh, we are organizing different types of, of services, aging clinic, with, with, uh, mainly with, with preventive services. This is extremely important. And uh, I will uh, uh, talk a little bit more about this, this counseling. This is one of the key issues. But at the moment, we have also um, organized a new uh, complex for the elderly, elderly people in, in Joensu. Different types of homes, housing, with hobbies, activities, different types of services, education and, and research and, and counseling and advice services. This is one of the, of the key issues at the moment. <coughs> Group homes, sometimes uh, elderly people are afraid of living alone, but sometimes they, they like to, to come together so that three, four people are, are able to, to live together and then during the daytime we have a nurse and then they can call help if, if they need during the, the night time. Of course, all people are not able to, to live together. You have to choose persons, personalities which suit well to, to live together. Otherwise you are in the middle of uh, of different quarrels all the time. <laughs> this is the uh, new campus. You can, you can argue, well, is it good to put uh, old people together? This is just in the middle of the city. There is a river. This is uh, actually the best place in, in Joensu what the city was willing to offer. We had to I would like to say fight with, with some of the, of the planners, city planners. So whether, whether to give this kind of good place to, to old people. They, they could sell it for a good price to property developers. But we, uh, we had the, the, the political will with us. So we have... Um, different types of, of housing, so that small apartments, then 24-7 uh, uh, service housing, and then uh, privately owned houses, and, and uh, restaurants and, and other services. So this was a very much wanted place. And this is, I think, a good example. Just a few, a few pictures. And, and this is the, the key area where this is counseling and advice. 
Also, it is important to, to organize so that you, you get some, some safety issues for the elderly. But how to organize it? That's, that's the question. Then, if you're interested in, in money, at the moment, we have the opportunity. We, can, we will find from our database how much money we are spending for the elderly. I have taken a few examples. This is 20 uh, for seven care, 56 million euros, support services to homes, special care in, in central hospitals. Here uh, we have all health and, and social expenses for the elderly. And, and this is something I, I would like, I don't know, maybe you have a better system, but this is something so that the, the planners, the, the managers, they can know how much money we are spending or investing in the, in the elderly population. And if we, if we invest more in, in support services, can we reduce the, the special care expenses? If we invest more in rehabilitation, can we reduce again special care hospitals? For example, we have just uh, made a new building, an, uh, a central, I mean, a health center unit was changed into a rehabilitation unit so that if uh, an elderly people uh, have a stroke, she will get good rehab. Summary. Promotion of health and social activities is a key so that the uh, elderly people will be able to live in their homes. To organize different types of support. How much NGOs and other organizations can play a role? It's an important question. How much relatives are able to help or, or other, other friends? Uh, different types of housing solutions. To, and then to know the, the expenses. Normally we, we know how much, what are the expenses of special care or primary care or social services, but very seldom we know uh, the expenses for, for a certain age group to, together. Integration of services is important. Health and social services. At the moment, we have organized in North Karelia the reform means that the municipalities have given the responsibility to, to one organization which is organizing all health and social welfare services. And that is, that is very important. That's, that's my opinion. And then uh, counseling to, to make service plans. We are so many different types of services. How do you think an elderly people can, can decide where to go, what can he or she, she, normally she, what she can get? And uh, the, the relatives, they, they don't know. So this is one of the, of the key issues, and here we can also get some help from good IT solutions. Thank you so much.